The following opinions are solely those of Botest.com and its test captain. Hi, I'm Steve for Botest.com, and today we're having a look at a Stingray 212 SE deck boat rigged with a new 200 horsepower Mercury V6 3.4 liter four stroke outboard. Since this is our first chance to test it, we were curious to check out how Stingray performed with it. Also, the 212SC is the largest deck boat Stingray makes, so we wanted to see how she compares to others on the market. Come along as we test and inspect this new rig. The Stingray 212SC deck boat has a length overall of 21 feet 11 inches and a beam of 8 feet 6 inches. With an empty weight of 3,100 pounds, 75% fuel and two people on board, we had an estimated test weight of 3,866 pounds. Our test power was a 200 horsepower Mercury 4-stroke 3.4 liter V6 outboard, which is the lightest 4-stroke engine in class. It was turning a 14 by 19 inertia stainless steel prop. We reached a top speed of 53.2 miles per hour at 5840 RPM. Most people we know will choose to run the boat at about 4000 RPM when conditions permit, and there we recorded 35.3 miles per hour, getting 4.4 miles per gallon but the actual best economic cruise came in at 3,000 RPM and 23 miles per hour. At that speed, our 4.4 gallon per hour fuel burn translated into 5.3 miles per gallon and a range of 271 statute miles. That's the most fuel efficient performance that's been published on this boat with either a 150 or 200 horsepower engine. Pushing the throttle to the pins, the 200 horsepower Mercury 4-stroke gave the Stingray 212 SC a time to plane of 3.5 seconds. She went 0 to 20 miles per hour in 4.2 seconds and on up to 30 miles per hour in 6.3 seconds. One attribute we noticed was that she had good reserve power at cruising speeds, allowing her to have strong acceleration in the mid-range RPM. She surged ahead when called upon and it's a good feeling to know that a power boost is there if wanted. The Stingray gave us a good dry ride, but of course we didn't really challenge her with the conditions we saw on the lake. She was well-mannered and stable in turns with a comforting inboard lean and her hull threw any spray low and to the side. In hard turns, we noticed a touch of prop ventilation, but easing off on the turn took care of that in short order. There was a bit of chine walk, again tamed by easing off the turn. When coming up to speed, about half trim got her into her running attitude, and the spray would move back from midships to the stern quarter. Of course, the big question is, did we think that she was overpowered with a 200 horsepower engine? And the answer to that is no. She felt fine through all parameters, never wavered from controllability, and in fact gave good performance. That said, if I were buying this boat for the kids or grandkids, I'd probably opt for a 150 for a bigger safety margin. It will also reduce the price. Now, let's inspect the Stingray 212 SC from stern to bow. The stern consists of a large swim platform on either side of the outboard, providing a good compromise of deck space for launching water sports and accommodating an outboard engine. If you haven't seen the top cowling service door on this Mercury outboard, it's definitely worth a closer look. Simply push on the door and it unlatches. Underneath, we find decals outlining service information and intervals. There's a dipstick and a fill cap, as well as detailed information. There's also a red button, which we press to release a lift and carry handle, which also unlatches the cowling from the engine with a series of cables. Seeing the outboard with the cover off, we can easily spot the oil filter and fuse box. We can also see the air intake plenum and long intake runners. Mercury says every part of this outboard is designed with an eye toward reducing sound and vibration, and it seems to work. We recorded 84 decibels at wide open throttle. This 19-inch wide pass-through makes it easy to enter the cockpit from the swim platform with a couple of steps measuring 6 and 7 inches down to the main deck. The 212SC has a rated capacity of 12 people or 2,600 pounds. The cockpit has L-shaped seating served by padded bolsters. There's a receiver for the standard pedestal in the deck. The top of the transom has four beverage holders, two on either side of a receiver for a tow pylon. The helm seat has a flip-up bolster as well as a bucket design that will help keep the helmsman behind the wheel during the high-speed maneuvers. Yet, it has a large cutout in the back to keep things cool. We measured the cockpit depth at the helm at 28 inches. The helm has a curved tinted acrylic windscreen and the helm dash is topped by a vinyl brow. The gauges are analog and from port to starboard show engine trim, a speedometer with a built-in fuel gauge, and a tachometer with voltmeter. The last gauge space is blank. There's connectivity for the smartphone to port and a 12 volt power connection to starboard. The stereo is Bluetooth enabled. The ignition is below with the horn button. To starboard of the wheel is a bank of rocker switches controlling the ship's systems. The wheel is on a tilt base. The manual throttle and shift lever gets connected to a digitally controlled throttle body on the Mercury 4-stroke outboard. 
The SimRad Helm display has the Mercury Vessel View function integrated, so if I touch fuel, I get more information on fuel consumption and efficiency. If I touch speed, I can get more data on that. Vessel Control lets me set parameters on active trim, smart tow for tow sports profiles I want, troll control for fishing, and cruise control can set whatever speed I want. Then just throw the throttle forward and it will go up to and maintain that speed. I can have temperature and gauge readouts and customize the screen any way I want. Opposite the helm is a console with a sink on top, a wastebasket beneath the hatch, and dedicated space for a fire extinguisher. Forward are a couple of lockers, the lower of which stows a standard 25-quart cooler. Best of all, these lockers serve as steps for easy, safe portside boarding. There's a midship locker in the cockpit sole, which has room for water skis and gear. The helm console has a two-piece door that makes it easy to use as a changing room or opt for a porta potty It also includes dedicated storage for a pedestal table. The bow area has wraparound seating with padded bolsters. The port seat back is removable. The deck includes a receiver for a pedestal table and their storage under the seats on both sides. Under the snap-in center cushion is an insulated 45-quart cooler for beverages or it can be optioned for a live well. It drains overboard and on the bow is a hatch covering a folding beach boarding ladder and anchor locker. There's a pull-up shower to port to make sure the salty swimmers and beachgoers' sandy feet get cleaned up as they come aboard. Filler cushions can be inserted over the footwell to turn the bow into a large sun pad. That's our test and inspection of the Stingray 212 SC with the Mercury 4-stroke 200 outboard. For BoatTest.com, I'm Captain Steve. We'll see you on the water.